afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Condo Insider that is put on from put on with um, Hawaii Council of Community Associations. So today we're going to be talking about security guards. And um, joining me will be Spike, Spike Dennis, who is um, with Securitas. And we are going to be um, bringing him in in about a few minutes. See you soon. Hi, Spike. Nice to see you again. Hello, Rayleigh. Nice to see you again. You're looking good. Right. <laughs> so I have with me today Spike Dennis. He is the responsible principal guard and consultant with, um, he also does consulting. He is with Securitas. He is also the chair person of the board of private detectives and guards. So um, he has been um, in the security um, security guard business for quite a long time or um, probably since he was a teenager, maybe even. <laughs> but um, security guard licensing started in 2013 under Act 2008. So it requires that all guards, agents, operatives, assistants employed by a guard agency, even private business entities, or even government agencies that act in a guard capacity shall apply to register with the board. And they have to meet certain requirements. So they also do, um, pre-licensed education, continuing education. Um, but the main point is they have to be 18 years and older, have to have a high school or equivalent education, um, no mental disorder type of um, conditions. They do have to submit to a criminal background check. Um, so at the very start, they're gonna do um, at least eight hours of pre-licensed education and then four hours of continuing education every year. So every year they're gonna renew their licensing and they're gonna go through the same criminal background checks um, as they did and they pay their fees um, and then they can go out into the workforce. So um, so let's start off with a couple of definitions, Spike. So what does it mean to act in a guard or guard capacity? Okay, so uh, actually guard capacity uh, language uh, was developed as part of that act 208 that went into effect in 2013. So, it, it means the performance of safekeeping, observation, and reporting functions. Uh, safekeeping means protecting property, assets, or persons through physical presence uh, to detect and deter illegal actions and appropriate actions, violations of property or premises rules, or code of conduct. Physical presence means uh, Manning a post or personing a post, I guess. Uh, the stationary guard includes uh, the law actually includes bouncers um, and patrolling of the premises, as well as physically responding to alarms, incident, emergencies on a property, and so forth. That's a basic definition. That's quite interesting when I was reading this or looking at it. It's um, that even bouncers are considered guards. <laughs> right. <laughs> they essentially act in a guard capacity. Right? But if you're just an individual that's watching security cameras, you really don't need to be licensed as a guard. Actually, uh, you really do. Um, okay. that, that is one of the functions of a guard. Um, and it, depending on the uh, circumstances, uh, let's say central station CCTV monitoring, mm -hmm would not need to be licensed as guard. If they're in a condo working in the security command center or security office, um, they would need to be licensed as guard. So if they're pretty much watching the cameras all day um, and they're working in a condo, technically they should be licensed? Yeah, because they're yeah. guards. If, if, they're, uh, if the guarding, if being a guard is incidental um, to their other job functions and duties. Um, on a, it really should be decided on a case-by-case -case basis, looked at by management of the board uh, or their the board's attorney. Um, they may not need to be like. So um, in the courses, um, um, there's really like, the, here's always been the, the conversation going on between a lot of different people is the difference between a security guard that's in a residential condo type environment versus one that's in a commercial 
like your shopping malls and things of that nature. Um, is the rules or what they really do slightly a little bit different? Because you're dealing with two different types of properties. Right. Two different types of premises. Uh, in general terms, yes. I, I mean, there is a difference. You're in a commercial setting or even uh, mixed use that have condos and, and business. Um, you're guarding not only commercial, but people's castles uh, where they live, such as the case with condos. Uh, commercials, you're guarding you know, their workplaces. And there's different challenges. Um, so the operating procedures that the guards follow are built differently. Um, you know, businesses, commercial are open to the public uh, during business hours, but condominiums are not. So screening of visitors is done uh, differently uh, during business hours. Um, and the risks uh, are, are different. So I noticed that you also. Um... One of the positions, in it, and I, I can imagine this would apply to both residential and commercial, is you're really protecting the property. You're there to protect the property, number one. Whether it's residential, build, condo building, or commercial, you're there to protect the, the property itself. Yeah. Um, and, and hopefully the little, little aspects of the business as well. Yeah. Um, and the people coming in and out, you know, you see an incident, you report it, or do what, whatever the procedure is established. Um, what about fire? That's fire. Are they all trained yeah. in their classes about fire safety and stuff like that? Yes, uh, there's a, a basic training. Uh, it does, does include a fire component. Uh, and one of the biggest risks to uh, facilities, whether they're commercial uh, or residential, is our fire water damage. Um, so uh, typically, uh, security guards, after their initial um, basic training, undergo additional training on each site, uh, whether commercial or condo. And condos, uh, oh, you set a minimum number of hours. You're you're using standardized written operating procedures uh, that the guards should be familiar with. They, they were shown that uh, in their basic training. So typically, guards will train for. To experience and floaters that go to different sites, uh, they don't need a whole lot of training. If they're relatively new or inexperienced at that site, they'll need to train somewhere between 16 and 40 hours initially. Um, do they, um, and I'm sure part of it comes with experience, but um, do they get some training about um, how to write their incident reports or? Um, how to write their observation type of thing and how to report like little weird things that they've been noticing um, and they need to document. Do they, are they educated or um, kind of give examples of how to clearly write a report? Yes. Yes. Um, they need to be able to write clearly and they could do it. So yes, there's, there's the answer to that. And in today's environment, uh, security guards on Probably most sites now are, are equipped with devices, a secure thoughts devices called Vision. So it is an electronic digital instrument that records their patrols where they were at what time. It allows them to uh, they enter information into fields for incident reports. Also, their, their hourly logs are in there, the photographs uh, for incidents. Um, and the devices also allow for analysis of incidents over a period of time. So that can assist in security planning, the where, the why, the who, and the what of incidents occurring on site can be analyzed. So. Well, that's a really good point. So if a condo is looking for to hire a security guard company, um, that's, a, that's a good point to, um, to bring out, is like what kind of, um, what does a security guard bring to the table as far as, um, what you just said, like incident reports and, you know, all that kind of stuff, because that's that's a plus to me. It's a plus. You know? it's called, they're called guard management system. And so, you know, again, it's patrol documentation, incident report, photos, logs, uh, enables analysis. The client, um, you get a, uh, you access uh, the website. Uh, in secure houses, uh, you get your own uh, dashboard. So the client can just log in. Uh, see all the guard activity, review logs, incident reports, the photograph, all of that. That's cool. That's yeah. really cool. 
<laughs> Come on. So um, one of the other questions I get asked or some people have kind of like talked to me about is um, how there's like a, a like a guard code of ethics. Um, you know, some people will say, well, you know, they're involved in something that they were off duty. They witnessed something and they got became involved and the police were called. And how are they supposed to respond or um, when they're outside of their employment capacity? Okay. Well, they would respond as a, as a private citizen. I mean, many, uh, many, many security guards are trained in CPR and first aid. Um, I wouldn't say the majority, but most kind of, you know, most contracts, uh, especially for commercial, uh, require that uh, the guards be treated for state. So, um, as citizens uh, out of the out and about, uh, typically most security officers are responsive uh, to emergency situations. Um, they're not at that moment obviously employed. Uh, so, as far as liability goes, they're on their own. But we have uh, laws here that protect the private citizens for, for helping. They have um, rules where they're off duty. They can't be, in, they need to be like out of their uniform. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, going to and from work, it, it's common. Uh, right. Security officers wear uniforms. We expect them to uh, arrive at work uh, dressed. It, once, it, once they're at their residential location, they should. You know, I know they have a shirt. You usually have a shirt underneath. You know, right. I see some going Seven Eleven. The shirt's all open. You can tell that they're off duty, or you know, going home. I need to get a drink. Right. <laughs> get right. that soda before the drive home. You know. Yeah. Okay, right. so off duty, they should be. Um, they should not be in uniform when they're off off the clock. And um, yeah, well, that's, that's a, a kind of a catch this catch can. I mean, if you you've got to take a bus uh, to. Your job site, there's no um, place to change. You're going to uh, be there just before the start of your shift. Uh, it may be difficult to uh, be ready to go. Uh, on but time. once they're home, once they're home, oh, yeah, they no, should, yeah. They're, yeah. they're capable of changing clothes, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And Thank then um, there's been a lot of incidences that um, has been happening around about picture taking. And being approached by security guards, um, you know, and um, an individual is taking pictures. And right. one of my questions, I go, where were you? Commercial or residential? And what were you? What were you photographing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I go. There's a big difference of what you were photographing. You right. know, but if it's general, you know, general items, you're not focused on someone's line looking in or the swimming pool. You know, you're just taking general pictures of the building. Um, is there um, like I'm sure in commercial, it might be at like a no-no because right. of a commercial yeah. property. But yeah. in a residential, you know, you have realtors that right. need to take pictures of the property, or right. even the owner that wants if they're doing it for sale by owner. Um, I mean, what is the general rules about picture taking? A lot of it would depend on the property and what the uh, the SOP is for that. But you know, if the person's a resident. Um, you know, that obviously cuts one way. If it's uh, somebody that's not authorized to be on the property, we want the security officer or the security guard to challenge uh, the person to identify uh, who they are and what they're doing. justifiable, pretty much yeah. a justifiable reason. If they're a resident of the building, I mean, it shouldn't be an issue, considering right. that they're not taking inappropriate pictures, okay. right? <laughs> um, but I would think a commercial property might be a little bit more like, uh, what are you taking pictures of? What for? Right. Yeah, right. no, commercial property is definitely because of the, the threat to the facility, because of the types of businesses that are there uh, may uh, raise the risk level. So if it, it looks suspicious, uh, the security officers should challenge the people in a commercial environment. Okay. So if, um, like, if I were to hire a security guard on my property, my condo, um, mm -hmm. I mean, they can help with house rule enforcement, like check the parking lot, making sure everybody's up to date with their stuff, you know, that's in accordance with the house rules. Um, how much do you guys put on for them to enforce house rules? Well, uh, it, again, it depends on the property and the uh, board's 
of philosophy, um, it's difficult to have guards enforcing health rules, particularly when there's there could be hazards involved. Uh, again, water, fire, barbecues, uh, conduct, uh, and house rules. You know, swimming pool. That's that sort of thing. But I mean, it's quite common. Uh, Here's one big question. So you have a guard that's been on the property for a while, and it could be either commercial or it could be residential. So, you know, over time, they get to know everybody's coming and going, you know, familiar faces, things of that nature. And um, and what if they start to notice some weird things that they really shouldn't be doing? You know, I mean, and it happens. Even resident managers and resident, I mean, they get familiar and they kind of let it slide, but then it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, how do you guys handle those kind of situations where you need to, you know, sometimes there's that line drawn, like, okay, you stepped over the line. I let you go a little bit. Now you've stepped over that line. Now I got to write you up or trespass you or, or whatever the, the situation is going to occur. Are your guards trained in, in um, how to deal with those kind of situations? Yeah, I mean, talking about the guards, the guards themselves, or as you say, resident managers being too familiar with this. Thing. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it comes to each site has a, a site supervisor and each ship should have somebody in charge if there's more than one guard. So, uh, you know, conduct is really important. Uh, being more familiar uh, with when we're talking about condo setting, same applies to commercial though. Um, so, yeah, we want to stop that, uh, report it, uh, discipline um, as required, uh, you know, verbal warning, written warning, depending on the how egregious the conduct is, but yeah, no, there's, I mean, we have, you know, code of ethics, um, and each site uh, may have certain issues that are repeated due to the way that the site is, is configured or the type of activity. Uh, that, One would be like, you know, you have people that scavenge the trash cans. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I know one condo building, like, we don't like them doing that. I go, well, here's one one thing to think about is, are they throwing the trash out as they're digging through it? I would have an issue with that. You know, I could, don't be making a mess that we have to clean up. You know, if you yeah. want to scavenge the trash can, but don't be making a mess for us, you yeah. know? Um, and, you know, some people, you know, but, and then some condos are like, no, not at all. And I'm like, okay, um, but then you start to alienate these people and then you create another can of worms, you know, by then retaliating because you kick them off the property, you know? So yeah. it gets to be kind of, I always thought of it, it's kind of touchy, you know? It needs, it needs to be uh, handled with tact and, yeah. and professionalism. You know? It's uh, like, it's like a child. Like when you're trying to you know, tell your child, no, you can't do that anymore, you know? And then they take that inch you're like, I, we told you, you know, and I said, you have to remember, you also don't want that retaliatory tactic, but you don't want to let it go to the other extreme. You let them take over. Um, I think that's, um, is there a lot of training that you guys go into that? Um, yes, there is a lot of training and dealing uh, with essentially trespassers uh, on the property. Um, you know, there's, it's, a, it's become a very high risk area. Um, with some of the mentally ill, uh, unhoused, uh, who may be also on drugs. Um, in the past 24 months, we've had a couple of security officers killed. It's getting both, to be a scary in, world lately. Yeah, both in commercial environments. Um, so, yeah, it needs to be handled tactically, safely, and there is, there is specific training on how to conduct yourself. Conduct yourself in your department. So there's um threat training, I want to say. Some sort of threat training. So in the four hour CEs, what what do you guys normally do in the four hour CEs? Okay. The four hour CEs are, are triennial now uh, for re-registration. It used to be a biennial. Um that changed in uh, I think it was 2017. So uh, there's a smorgasbord of, of subjects in there that underpins the basic eight hours or adds additional knowledge. Um, the next uh, training cycle will be uh, 2024 uh, registration. Um, I don't have the 
outlines in front of me, but typically it's five or six uh, topics included in a four hour. But safety, uh, aloha, you know, fire, a lot, of a lot of repetition, but good underpinning. Okay. All right, cool. Anything else you want to add in about security guards? Things to look for that uh, that board should look for in a in a quality security guard. Yeah, you know, I mean, getting quality service. It's really about the quality of the person on site. Uh, pay is very important. It's uh, become uh, highly competitive. You know, everybody's short of staff, uh, so pay rates have risen dramatically uh, for security personnel, and the clients uh, are uh, by and large almost all are willing to uh, discuss that and uh, share the burden of increasing wages so we can attract good good quality personnel. Um, other than the, the security officers themselves is the supervision, say that field supervisors, and then your managerial staff, uh, Securitas land, they're called district managers. Um, these guys are experienced professional security professionals. Um, they manage a couple, a couple hundred, three hundred guards, uh, and they have in assisting them as scheduling managers and field supervisors. So you want a, a board or at least the management to be familiar with the district managers if you're managing the security force that's on their property and the person, uh, the immediate uh, personnel that report to that district manager. So good so strong. Sorry to interrupt. Is the district manager also familiar with the property that um, yeah. individual properties and not memorize it, but kind of know general the the likes and don't likes of the property? Yes, definitely. And they actually write the written standard operating procedures. That takes a lot of collaboration with the client. They have to know, as, obviously, as much as the security guard knows about that property. So, I mean, that's really important. Um, if those people are available uh, and responsive to the board and the, uh, the resident manager. Okay. Um, do um, how many clients do you guys even have? I mean, I mean, I I know you guys are in that big building off of Nimitz. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably proprietary, but to, as far as personnel. Uh, around 1,500, 1,600 guards now. Actually, more wow. than uh, near, near 2,000 again. Wow, that's a lot. That's a, quite a bit of handful. We've got some uh, great uh, Michael Gall, our new uh, area vice president, who came up uh, to the ranks, former uh, Army Ranger, uh, really bright guy, knows electronics well, as well as the security guard business. So, um, And he's got some great district managers working for us now. So who does your actual presentations? Like if the board wanted to do, um, wanted you guys to come in to explain about Securitas, who would they call to make uh, that arrangement? Uh, I would have them call Michael Gall, who's the area vice president. Um, just call a direct line and we'll, we'll run to the right person. Uh, there's an individual named Clint Kurgan who does the uh, proposals and then the district managers uh, will be handling that account or Mike Gall personally uh, will go and meet with that client. A potential client. So right off the bat, we're, we'll be working with the, the team. Okay. Hey, any words of wisdom for our condo boards about security? <laughs> um, have a, a good contract. <laughs> <Like> a, <laughs> a contract that consults your consults your legal counsel, um, and then really vet your uh, who's going to be on the security team. You know, you want you're interested in meeting. Uh, the area vice president who's uh, running the Hawaiian Islands in Guam, and as well as the district manager uh, who would be assigned to that site. And most of the companies are set up, guard companies are set up similarly, um, same kind of management team. Okay, cool. All right, so we're kind of nearing our end. So um, we're going to um, close off here. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Spike. Um, for joining me today. Um, look forward to collaborating with you in the future. Um, and um, have a great week. 
Um, enjoy the weekend. This is Memorial, a long weekend coming up. <laughs> long weekend coming up. I'm going to look forward to it. Um, so everybody, thank you for joining us for Condo Insider. So if you're looking for security, um, make sure you review the video and um, start your journey. And also don't forget our other video that we already, we already did a segment on um, security cameras. That was really good. That was a good segment on security cameras, the do's and don'ts, because those are they had some important tips. Okay. Thank you, Spike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.